Good morning, church. Thanks for joining us this morning for our 9 a.m. morning devotion as we are going through the book of Acts. And as we're going through the book of Acts, we are going to finish chapter 19 today. Uh, so we're going to be in Acts 19. We're going to go from verses 23 through 41. And so get your running shoes on this morning as uh, we're going to cover these verses to finish chapter 19, the riot that happens in Ephesus. And so in chapter 19, the Apostle Paul and his mission team is in Ephesus. We know a lot about Ephesus because of the book of Ephesians. And we know what's going on is that there is a division between the Jews and the Greeks. And to complicate things even more is that the power of the gospel is changing lives. And so you have some Jews coming to faith in Jesus and some Greeks coming to faith in Jesus. And so now you have three major groups of people here in this city of Ephesus, the Jews, the Greeks, and the Christians, which is called the way here in Acts 19, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And because you have these three major groups, what's going to happen, we're going to see in Acts 19 as we close this chapter, is that there's going to be rioting in Ephesus. And in the midst of this rioting, we're going to see how God works through it, through the preaching of the gospel in this city. And so we turn to Acts 19, starting at verse 23. Today I'm using an NIV translation. And so if you're following along with the YouVersion Bible app or your own Bible, if you're using a different version today, I'm reading out the NIV, if it's slightly different. About that time, there arose a great disturbance about the way. The way is the Christian movement. That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the movement is these changing lives of believers coming to faith in Jesus Christ. This great disturbance happened right before in the verses in 18, 19, and 20, before we get into today's, where the Greeks are worshiping these false gods, these false idols and Greek mythology, which has also led them to superstitions, sorcery, black magic, occultic practices, which Paul is saying, all that stuff, bad, evil. Stay away from that. There's only one way, and that way is following Jesus Christ. Give up all that stuff, it's lies, it's superstition, it's stuff of Satan. Give up all that and follow Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And so that's the great disturbance here. And it's going to affect their lifestyle here in Ephesus. And that's what we're going to see, a silversmith who's going to be affected. Verse 24, a silversmith named Demetrius, who made silver shrines of Artemis, brought in a lot of business for the craftsmen there. He called them together along with the workers in related trades and said, You know, my friends, that we receive a good income from this business. And you see and hear how this fellow Paul has convinced and led astray large numbers of people here in Ephesus and in practically the whole province of Asia. The gospel, this movement of following Jesus the way, is overtaking the world. He says, the gods made by human hands are no gods at all. And so Demetrius is a silversmith. He's making his money along with other tradesmen of making these false idols. And namely here in Ephesus of Artemis, who is a Greek goddess of fertility. And this Greek goddess of fertility, they're making these idols that people buy and they put in their homes and they pray to it, especially to have children. And Notice Demetrius isn't saying that Paul is teaching any false doctrine, but he's saying this is going to affect our way of life. This is our livelihood. This is our living. And that's what creates this riot here in Ephesus is because it's going to affect their income, their money, their pockets. And it's going to affect their city economy is what he is saying. Verse 27, there is danger not only that our trade will lose its good name, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will be discredited, and the goddess herself, who is worshipped throughout the province of Asia and the world, will be robbed of her divine majesty. He's saying we're going to have great economic fallout here. Personally, with all the tradesmen who are making all the money of creating these false idols of the Greek goddess of Artemis, also too, 
people are no longer going to come and to worship and to see her temple, which brings economic influence uh, to our city because it's going to be discredited because of the doctrine that this Paul is preaching and teaching about this Jesus as he's telling us the first commandment, you shall have no other idols. And so Paul is saying, get rid of these things. And as he's doing it, this is what causes the riot is that's going to affect the city of Ephesus and the income. And what we're going to see is Demetrius and this mob is going to create a riot and disturbance because it affects their income, but they're also going to hide behind the patriotism and the loyalty of the false Greek goddess of Artemis and their way of life here in Ephesus. Verse 28, when they heard this, they were furious and began shouting, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Soon the whole city was in an uproar. The people seized Gaius and Aristarchus, Paul's traveling companions from Macedonia, part of his mission team, and all of them rushed into the theater together. Paul wanted to appear before the crowd, but the disciples would not let him. Even some of the officials of province, friends of Paul, sent him a message begging him not to venture out into the theater. So as this, robs, this um, mob starts to take over, this riot breaks out. The apostle Paul and his companions are hiding out in the theater. And Paul, he wants to go out and speak to the people. He wants to speak to the crowd in the midst of this riot. But his disciples and also some of the leaders there are saying, Paul, not a good idea. Not a good idea to go out and address the crowd. It's not safe for you. We're going to protect you. Just sit here and sit low. Verse 32, the assembly, this riot, this mob, was in great confusion. They were shouting one thing, some another. Most of the people did not even know why they were there. So some people joined this riot. They don't know the cause. They don't know what's going on but they just join it in this melee where everything is breaking loose. And so that's what's happening here. Verse 33, the Jews in the crowd pushed Alexander to the front and they shouted instructions to him. He motioned for silence in order to make defense for the people. And so the Jewish people, they are getting hit hard in this, in this riot too because some of the Greeks believe they're part of the problem it's the Christians and the Jews, and they're linking them together. And in the midst of it, and they're shouting, and nobody can speak, nobody can talk. They put Alexander out there in front to speak to them, but he's a Jewish guy. And so he's trying to quiet them down so he can speak. But look at verse 34. But then when they realized he was a Jew, they shouted in unison for about two hours, great as the Artemis of Ephesians. So once they realized, hey, Alexander, he's a Jew, He's lumped into part of the problem. We're not going to listen to him. This riot gets louder and louder for the next two hours. Verse 35, the city clerk comes out, quiets the crowd and says, Fellow Ephesians, doesn't all the world know that the city of Ephesus is the guardian of the temple of the great Artemis and of her image which fell from heaven? Therefore, since these facts are undeniable, you ought to calm down, do not do anything rash. So they send out the city clerk to try to quiet down the riot and the mob. And as the city clerk comes out, you can look at verse 37. You have brought these men here, though they have neither robbed temples nor blasphemed our goddess. If then Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen who have started this riot, this mob, have a grievance against anybody, the courts are open and there are pro counsels. They can press charges. If there is anything further you want to bring up, it must be settled in a legal assembly. So the city clerk saying, please quiet down, stop rioting. And Demetrius, you and the men who started this riot and this mob, there's a way to go about it. Rioting is illegal. That's not the way to go. Instead, go and work through the courts. We have a system and a process in place. So go ahead and bring up charges and go through the system. Take them to court. And if you have any other charges, bring them to court also. But it needs to be done in that assembly, in that arena not in this rioting and this mobbing and all of this destruction and confusion that's throwing our city in this huge uproar, which isn't going to be good. And so verse 40, as it was, we are in danger of being charged with rioting because of what have happened today. In that case, we would not be able to account for this commotion since there is no reason for it. And so the city clerk is saying, we can get charged for rioting, breaking the law, causing this commotion, 
because there is no reason for this. We have a system in place. In verse 41, after he said this, he dismissed the assembly. And so what we see here, church, in our practical application is that when the word of God is preached and the gospel and the good news that Jesus is preached and taught and the word of God continues to move in a powerful way, Satan is going to be right there and he's going to be in opposition. And as Satan's trying to thwart the way and the movement of the Christian church. And so when we're preaching and teaching and we're sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and we're living the way, the Christian life, and it's going to have witness and power and influence on other people, we expect that there's going to be opposition, that the devil's going to be right there, and he's going to try to cause havoc and to wreck things and to try to throw people in confusion. And so we expect that. The good news is, is that Satan has been defeated through the power of the cross, that Jesus has overcome this world. And so we have a solid foundation in Jesus, knowing that he gives us victory, but we too understand that there's going to be persecution, there's going to be opposition, especially when it comes to the Holy Spirit and the movement of lives being transformed by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As it was in the book of Acts, it still continues today, uh, here and around the globe, that uh, Christianity is going to be under attack. And the good news is, is that our fighting is done not with flesh and blood and the ways of the world. Our fighting is done through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the wisdom, the advice, and the counsel that He brings in sharing the good news and in seeing lives being transformed. And that when the world sees us loving God and loving other people, even loving our enemies and praying for those who persecute us, that's how we fight this, this battle. And every day as Christians, we put on the full armor of God knowing that every day spiritual warfare is real and that we are at war until Jesus comes back. And so we should expect suffering, difficulty, opposition. Heaven's our home. We're foreigners in this land. This is not the land for us. Heaven is our home. And so it's going to be difficult. But in the midst of it being difficult and being witnesses for Christ, Jesus gives us the victory. And that's what we see playing out here in the book of Acts. Even in the midst of this riot, it can't thwart God's movement and truth here in Ephesus because the truth of Jesus Christ is powerful and that it is active, it is true, and it cuts to the heart of people. It pierces the heart. And so that's why we live the truth, we speak the truth, and we walk in the truth, and we shine the light, even though the darkness doesn't understand it. Church, we bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful that Satan has been defeated, that you give us victory. And in the midst of spiritual warfare, you give us your word of God, which is truth and is grace, and it is our foundation. Help us today to put on that full armor of God with your truth and with the power of your word as we go out to be lights, especially in dark places. Lord, we pray for the power of your Holy Spirit to continue to move in our hearts. Keep us fired up for the mission and the purpose that you have called us to, to be light bearers as we are created in your image. And as we go out as your ambassadors and your representatives today, help people see not us, but see you, that they see Christ in us by the way we speak, by the way we act, by the way we walk, and by the way we talk. And all God's people said, Amen. Church, today we finish Acts 19. Tomorrow morning, Acts chapter 20. Have a blessed day as you continue to be a part of the way, the truth, and the life, being followers of Jesus Christ.